Next, staple the flaps that you just creased. I suggest putting the first staple right at the natural bend in the milk carton. Put two additional staples on one side of that first staple. And two additional staples on the other side of that first staple. The same thing to the other flap on the other side. It should look like this when you're finished. With any pair of pliers, squish flat all the staples you just put in. There are three reasons for doing this. The flattened staples are stronger, they practically disappear when you paint them, and you're not likely to catch your finger on the end. In the next step, you will staple the front of the boat. By the way, the front of the boat is also known as the bow. Notice that the edges are uneven here. Make sure you even them out before you start stapling. Make the first staple near the top, parallel to the edge. Notice that the staple is close to the edge, but not on the edge. Flip the boat over. Put the next staple in the same place, only going in the opposite direction. If the second staple collides with the first staple and doesn't go in, just pull it out with a pair of pliers and try again. And when you do get it right, use the pliers to flatten the staples. These two staples will take an enormous amount of stress as you widen the boat to actually look like a boat. Put three more staples in, below the first two. These don't have to be doubled up because they don't take as much stress. But do flatten these staples too. The next step is to glue the back of the boat, which is also known as the stern. Although you could have these side flaps on the outside, most people think they look better on the inside like this. Before you can glue them, you need to sand all surfaces to be glued. In this case, one side of the flaps and one side of the stern. In the video, we're pushing the flaps out of the way and sanding the stern first. Or whatever works. It's easier to sand the flaps if you can somehow back them up against something solid. When you actually glue, make sure that the edge of the stern lines up with the side of the boat. Not like this, and not like this, but just even. Like this. Push the flaps so the glue will not run off them. You can glue both sides at one time, or you can glue them separately. If you glue them at the same time, put on more glue than you think you need. It's better to have too much glue than too little. 
it will fill in the gaps so that the boat doesn't leak and you can always scrape off the extra that squeezes out. Make sure you're using the low temp hot glue or you could get a bad burn. Use pliers to squeeze out the extra glue. We use glue instead of staples on the back because this connection does not take as much stress as the front and the glue should make this part of the boat waterproof. You can scrape off the glue with a fingernail. We reshaped the boat for several reasons beside how it looks. If you make the deck, the hull has to be wide enough for it to fit. Even if you don't plan to make the deck, the boat is not stable when it's narrow like this. Earlier you should have put in two staples going in from opposite sides at the top of the bow and flatten them with pliers. That's because it has to be able to take the stress there as you widen the hull. If it rips open you'll have to staple it again. Use your thumbs to widen the hull in the middle. Then notice how the sides toward the bow are still straight. Concentrate on one side at a time to curve them. Try not to put too much pressure on the staples in the bow. The hull is wide enough when it stays open by itself at about three and a half inches or around 90 millimeters at the line which used to be the corner of the carton.